Hello guys, welcome my today's video. Hopefully I can bring you something interesting. I found my Raspberry Pi from my storage box a couple of days ago. I was wondering what I can do with it. So what I did is I installed Ubuntu version 20.04 version on it. Um, this credit card side computer has uh, four USB so you can connect a USB keyboard, mouse, also you can connect a USB Wi-Fi adapter, as I did here. It has a RJ45 Ethernet port, HDMI display port, and one audio port. For the storage, I plugged in a 8 gig micro SD, and the latter system installed on. My Ubuntu installed it. So I was wondering what I can do with it. So the one thing I know for sure is I would like to install Docker. So I may run some Docker containers to it. Since it has a one gig RAM, um, as you can see from the screen, you will find out um, this machine has almost one gig RAM, but uh, it's almost 500 gig 500 Mac by size uh, run a uh, free so I believe it should be able to power enough to run some simple docker containers so let's start it <laughs> I have booted my Raspberry Pi using a USB cable. It doesn't take too much power. A normal USB port is enough to provide in a power supply to this credit card size computer. That's the one thing I like to use Raspberry Pi here. So I logged in. Let's check the OS version. So we are running Ubuntu 20.04.2 LTS version. Uh, one thing I want to mention, this is not regular x86 or 64-bit version Ubuntu. It's running on ARM architecture here. So you can see ARC, ARM version 7. That means it is 32-bit. It's not regular Intel x86, x64-bit version OS. It's ARM version OS and running on 32-bit. As I showed you before, we got a little bit um, 500 megabytes free memory. Um, to run Docker, we need to make some changes on the swap file size. Right now, it is zero to make it more reliable to run Docker, so we're going to increase that. That's what we're going to do next step. After you logged in using default username password Ubuntu, Ubuntu, that's the username, password is Ubuntu as well, and you were prompt to change the password. Uh, if you need to see the steps how to install Ubuntu 20.04 on Raspberry Pi, I have a post here on my blog install Ubuntu 20 for simply list all steps here. You can follow that um, to log in and to get it running. And then most important part here is get the Wi-Fi working. I did met an issue to get the Wi-Fi working. Ethernet port is fine. You can run it. But uh, for me, I prefer to use in Wi-Fi. I got the Wi-Fi adapter, but it does give me an issue uh, when I try to apply the Wi-Fi configuration here, it doesn't work at the beginning. I have to run troubleshooting and then I find out this command and then I shut down it and then get to apply NetPlan the configuration again. After that, I did um, static IP configuration here. Um, and then of course you need NetPlan apply again to make this configuration taken into effect into your Raspberry Pi. So, so far everything worked fine. Um, I also get uh, NetTools running IF config. 
So we are running on 192.168.2.9, this IP, static IP. Uh, I already did the um, uh, system update, package update four. So it does take lots of time when you run this command. Just give it a couple of hours, maybe half day to get it run, to finish it. Just warn you on that. Make sure your internet is stable. Uh, at least you need a couple of hours to get it done. So my next step will be to get the swap file size to increase to another one gig byte for my Raspberry Pi. That will give um, more memory to run the Docker containers. I got a permission denied issue. I need to run sudo on this command as well. So let's give it uh, another try. Yes, you can see from the screen output, all packages are up to date. So we are good to go. Um, let's try free. Right now we only have 322 megabytes free to use for our memory. Let's increase web file size. I do have another blog post to show you how to increase swap file size. There's a one command to change the swap file size, add it or delete it. So you can just quickly copy this command. The script is hosted in GitHub. You just fetch it and then run it. As long as you have internet connection, then you should be able to get this script and run it under your Linux root account. So we're going to add swap. So we're going to add it uh, one gigabyte. You will get the prompt to say successful create, successfully created. Um, to verify that, you simply type free and you will see. Uh, swap file size has been increased from zero to one gigabyte. I strongly suggest you to do this before you install the Docker on your Raspberry Pi. You will eventually you will meet uh, the memory limitation, which gonna causing the stabilizing issue on your Raspberry Pi when you run Docker. So we got the um, swap file increased to one gigabyte. Next step, we're going to be working on a Docker. We're going to run Docker on this Raspberry Pi machine. Let's start to install Docker and the Docker Compose. Um, same, I do have post in my blog about those installation commands. Um, simply just copy them, paste into Raspberry Pi. So it's not installed it. Uh, basically, uh, it's going to use a different command to do that. As you can see here, um, apt install docker.io on version 20.04. So we're going to try install docker.io. There's an additional package need to be installed. After Docker installed, we're going to install Pertainer. Uh, for Pertainer installation, we can search on my blogger here. We'll find the command. We can do this.
it does take a few minutes to get Docker installed. So we can see Docker client 1903 version installed, Docker server engine 1903 also in, installed. Let's try Docker Compose version. That we haven't installed that yet, but we do able to use in Docker Compose to get this installed. Let's do continue. One point twenty five Docker Compose version. Um, now we're going to try Potainer and those are commands. Create a volume dedicated for Potainer and uh, run this Potainer Docker. So we don't have an image on local, so it's going to go to internet to pull it out and then extracting it after pull it out. It's going to take a little bit of time. Um, we're going to wait here to see the process. Okay, it's finish it. Doc PS to list the um, calendar running Docker. Great, it's running, and we will see is memory. So not bad. Um, so now we can go back to our browser. It's running on port nine thousand. So we're going to change it to HTTP, it's not HTTPS. So it's loading the container. So we can see the CPU and the memory utilization at the same time when we do login. So you need to enter the container password. It has to be at least eight characters. Create this admin user. I don't need to save that password for this one. So it will be running on local. Let's connect to it. And it's up and running. Then we can create in that container. Right now we have one container running here, and we the one thing I like container is you can see the stat on this mesh on your container, so you can see the CPU utilization, memory utilization, and uh, processes and network usages. Very helpful, useful to see how well your resource has been used by your containers. This is all for this video. Uh, thank you for watching. If you find this video is useful for you, please subscribe my channel. Give me a thumb up. See you next time.